install YouTube, you probably have run into the softmax function. It is being mentioned along with machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, it's all exciting. But what really is the softmax function and that's why you're here. First of all, can I ask you for a favor to subscribe to my channel? YouTube is shutting down partners for all channels under 1,000 subscribers and it's quite really sad because I really enjoy learning and making this kind of tutorials for people so I would really like your support and it costs you nothing, I would really appreciate this favor. So. Back to softmax function, how can we understand it in just a few minutes? We're going to do a really cool demo here. Let me just erase everything. And um, because of the demo, I have prepped ahead of time so I don't waste your time here. So here you look at this slide I have here um, from Udacity. It's a lecture on deep learning. And when I first went through it, it was glossed over. Um, it was very well explained. This slide is beautiful, but I still don't understand what softmax is. So I spent some time understanding it. So first of all, you have your input here, largest scores. So this is likely a vector you get after a bunch of hidden layer neural network and you get a bunch of vectors. Some of them are larger than another. Some, some of the elements are larger than another. So 2.0, 1.0, 0.1. We never really know what the computer is looking at, but let's say it sees that it's more likely a shape of cat. So it gives this like 2.0 per 2.0 score. And then it still still somewhat looks like a dog. So 1.0 on the dog region and, and definitely not a bird. So 0.1, something like that, but not, not true. It's, it's just a way to think about it. Um, and then you put this in a black box, we'll call it black box right now, and you get probabilities. What does that mean? It's like kind of you flip a coin and you say, okay, I'm gonna give you head and tail, and I'm gonna represent it with some number, but give me back probabilities. And probabilities would be what, 50% and 50%. Um, if you do a bunch of experiments, um, you know, you have a neural network simulate this coin, it's gonna say, well, a fair coin is gonna give you 50% of 50%. So you might get something like 2.0, um, 2.0 as an input vector and your output and zero as anything else, you know, confounding factors, and then your probability is still 50, 50. So here we have 0 0.7, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. This is a very simple example. Note two things. Uh, the 2.0 input is corresponding to a bigger probability, and the 1.0 input, which is a smaller input, is corresponding to a smaller probability. So you turn number into probabilities. And one more thing to notice <coughs> is these probability sums to one. Very nice, it's like 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.1 is one. So probability summarized to one, and that's kind of nice. Usually you see a beginner softmax example as in the MINIST, uh, M-N-I-S-T example where you classify the digits. So um, we, when we output a number, let's say, um, you know, point, uh, the largest are nine, um, one, zero, 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 something, and the probability is gonna come out as something like really high number, 0.9 or something, 0.8, and then 0 0.1, 0, 0, 0.0. So everything sums to one, and it's trying to say, okay, if I hot encode zero as the first number I'm trying to predict, this largest likely to map to highest probability with, you know, in this case, 70% confidence that it's a cat, 20% confidence that it's a dog, and only 10% confidence that it's a bird. So it's still a very convoluted result, right? Um, so. So what is softmax? Let's really take a look at what is softmax here. It is a function that will output probabilities if given numbers. And what kind of processing is it doing on this number? First, it's take the special number e to the power of this number, like 2.0, so e to 2.0. But it's divided by and normalized by a sum of all the exponents. So all the e to the 2.0, e to the 1.0, e, e to the 0.1, <clears throat> everything together. Okay, so, so, and that's why it nicely, you know, get you a nice probability number that sums to one. So what does this mean? It's all very extract, um, abstract. So let's put this in to our function. And it's quite easy if you see. You notice that this input point one here is quite small compared to the other two, but things are kind of really stretched out. A logarithmic function e to some power is able to give you this very stretched out probability. We enlarge the differences between these three numbers. And that's why you get a, a much nicer, bigger, probability difference at the very end. So so we have this, what is the first part, right? We want to um, take all the, and obviously you can imagine, sorry, this does not summarize to one, right? Does not sum to one. So first of all, we have to take the E exponents of every single element. There's a very wonderful way to do this. NumPy, right? NumPy has a special thing, which is, um, let's say, um, this is, takes e to the whatever power you want it to be. So to the zeroth power would be what? Equal to one, right? Yeah, that's true, okay? So we're gonna store all the results we calculate in another vector called s. Um, and then we are going to take numpy 
exponent to i. What is the ith element for i in logits? So this is Python list comprehension. What it's trying to say is take each element in logits, take use numpy library e exponent um, function, take the special number e to the power of that element, and then give me back a list. So you will see, boom, everything is very you know much larger now. You can see where the seven, two, and one are starting to show at the beginning of each of these numbers, but not quite yet. It needs to be normalized. It does not sum to one. It's nice when it sums to one. Our brain has an easier time processing it. Our um, audience can understand the result better across different scenarios. It's more comparable. So um, what do we need to do now, remember, is we need to divide by the sum of these exponents. The reason why we calculated it is because we need the sum of all these numbers, the seven plus two plus one, um, and we get a scalar, like a number back. Okay, this is what we need to normal, normalize it by. Um, so our softmax output, actually we're already writing the softmax function, it's very simple, is we have to take each element in the logic or in the exp. So in the exponents, because that is, you remember the formula going back is e to the y, uh, the ith element power, right? So we're gonna say, okay, take each number, let's say j, or j in exponents, and we have to divide it by what? We have to normalize it by the sum which is one number of all the exponents that we calculated earlier, right? The sum of this entire array. Okay, should be good. Let's take a look. Oops. Okay, yes. Um, and um, so you, you can start to see that that's it. That's really it. That's, you got the softmax function right here. When you summarize all these outputs, it summarize nicely to one. And are these what we are looking for? Are these what's shown on the slide? And yes, actually, 0.65 rounding to the first decimal is 0.7, and round down 0.2, um, and round up 0.1. So you get your 70%, 20%, and 10%. Um, I notice some differences are enlarged, and some differences are actually, you know, um, also enlarged. Like you can see, like you know, originally this was what just 0.1 compared to one, but now it's saying, well, we cannot rule out that this last possibility, this last scenario, is also possible because we only have three options. If there are lots, lots of options, and this element, its input is near zero, it will become a much smaller number. So there you go, actually. And this is what I figured out in my process of studying machine learning as a beginner. And I think that is actually a cool, simple way to understand softmax function. Give me your inputs and comments below. Please subscribe to help my channel survive this YouTube Armageddon.